Sherlock Holmes. Everyone knows the iconic self-proclaimed consulting detective created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in 1887. Even those who have never read Doyle's four novels and 56 short stories. The character is one of the most recognisable in all of fiction, having been adapted, parodied and referenced countless times. In fact, Sherlock Holmes holds the Guinness World Record for the most portrayed literary human character in film and TV. Even when portrayed by a vegetable, the character is still recognisable. Then came Guy Ritchie's 2009 film, simply titled Sherlock Holmes. The film presented viewers with a unique interpretation of Doyle's creation, one many felt was more suited to a modern audience. But did the film actually reinvent Sherlock Holmes? In order to address this idea, we first need to examine the public perception of the character. The image of Sherlock Holmes is cemented in popular culture. Not that one. This one. Why? You're Sherlock Holmes, wear the damn hat. The deerstalker, calabash pipe, and of course the line, elementary my dear Watson, will forever be synonymous with the character. However, it may surprise you to learn these elements were either simply alluded to in the original books or absent entirely. Doyle never specifically described Holmes as wearing a deerstalker, though the adventure of the Silver Blaze does make mention of his ear-flapped travelling cap, and the Boscombe Valley Mystery has Holmes wearing a close-fitting cloth cap. In actual fact, it was illustrator Sidney Paget who first depicted Holmes definitively wearing a deerstalker. While this makes sense in stories taking place in rural areas, where such headwear would be appropriate, Holmes is often depicted wearing the cap even in the city, which makes far less sense. Doyle also frequently described Holmes as smoking a pipe. However, the character wasn't associated specifically with the calabash pipe prior to the 1899 play Sherlock Holmes, written by William Gilletti. Gilletti also played the title role, and chose to use a calabash pipe as the curved design allowed him to deliver dialogue while smoking the pipe. Finally, much like the popular Star Trek misquote, beam me up Scotty, Holmes never actually uttered the line, elementary my dear Watson, in the original books. He did occasionally refer to his companion as dear Watson, and was known to use the term elementary, but never in unison. Whether they realised it or not, most people's perception of the character comes from Basil Rathbone's portrayal. The actor played Holmes in 14 films, released between 1939 and 1946. However, the character's depiction in the 2009 film was intentionally quite different. When Guy Ritchie signed on as director, he insisted these familiar aspects be dropped entirely. American actor Robert Downey Jr., who at the time was just coming off the surprise success of Iron Man, was cast in the title role. Downey did not fit the expected image of Sherlock Holmes. He notably portrayed Holmes as a man of action, as well as genius. More on that shortly. Holmes' trusty companion, Dr. John Watson, is often portrayed as somewhat portly and a bit dense. A far cry from Doyle's retired army doctor, who, while not as brilliant as Holmes, does develop considerable deductive powers of his own. Very good, Watson. You've developed considerable deductive powers of your own. Hmm. The film depicts their partnership as more equal, with Watson ably managing Holmes' eccentricities. The on-screen chemistry between Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law really sells the relationship. How did you lure them in? Excellent question. Individually, I've been at it for six hours. And what happens if I do this? Right. The film also features several other iconic characters, including Police Inspector Lestrade, Watson's fiancée Mary Morstan, and the long-suffering landlady of 221B Baker Street, Mrs. Hudson. Holmes even makes reference to his brother Mycroft. My brother Mycroft has a small estate near Chichester. Beautiful grounds. The film expands the role of Irene Adler from her single appearance in the short story A Scandal in Bohemia. The character is extremely significant to Holmes. She is famously the only one of his many adversaries to ever outwit him. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, Holmes deeply respects her, treasuring a photo of her and referring to her on multiple occasions simply as the woman. However, the film presents their relationship as more overtly romantic. If I'm in danger, so are you. Come with me. What if we trusted each other? Hmm? You're not listening. 
I'm taking you to either the railway station or the police station. The film features several shadowy appearances from Holmes' nemesis, Professor James Moriarty, mostly to set up his more significant role in the sequel. Similar to Adler, Moriarty only appeared in the short story The Final Problem and the novel The Valley of Fear. However, given the character's significance to Holmes, his role is often expanded in adaptations. Fun fact, in the original release of the film, Moriarty was voiced by an unknown actor. I wager he'll have our man within the next 24 hours. He better. Reardon is the key to what Blackwood was doing. He's essential to my plan. However, after Jared Harris was cast in the sequel, Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, the filmmakers pulled a George Lucas and used Harris's voice in all subsequent releases of the film. I wager he'll have our man within the next 24 hours. He'd better. Reardon is the key to what Blackwood was doing. He's essential to my plan. Easily the most controversial aspect of the film is its high level of action, an attribute not commonly associated with Sherlock Holmes. Some viewers praise this as a bold reimagining of the character, while others saw it as a cheap attempt to modernise the franchise. Regardless, most people saw it as a new interpretation invented for the film. However, the filmmakers felt their version was actually truer to Doyle's original than most previous adaptations. Producer Lionel Wigram claimed, A lot of the action that Conan Doyle refers to was actually made manifest in our film. Very often, Sherlock Holmes would refer to a fight off-screen. We're putting those fights on-screen. In fact, right from the very first novel, A Study in Scarlet, Holmes is described as an expert in the arts of single stick and fencing, as well as a highly skilled boxer. Early in the film, Holmes participates in a bare-knuckle fight with a man named McMurdo. The character appears in the novel The Sign of the Four, where he claims Holmes wasted his gifts by not pursuing a career in boxing. In The Adventure of the Empty House, Holmes reveals his proficiency in the martial art Baritsu, commonly believed to be a mispronunciation of Batitsu. In fact, the martial art famously saved Holmes' life during his iconic confrontation with Moriarty at the Reichenbach Falls. In the film, however, Holmes uses Wing Chun Kung Fu, the martial art Robert Downey Jr. practices in real life. The adventure of the Musgrave Ritual also reveals Holmes would practice shooting his pistol by adorning the opposite wall with a patriotic VR, the initial standing for Victoria Regina, aka Queen Victoria. Unlike other recent adaptations, such as Sherlock and Elementary, the film retains the Victorian setting of the original stories, with all the limitations and freedoms that come with it. The film contains several references to Doyle's books, including numerous direct quotes. How did you see that? Because I was looking for it. My mind rebels with stagnation. Give me problems, give me work. You have the grand gift of silence, Watson, who makes you quite invaluable as a companion. <laughs> the game's afoot. Inevitably, one begins to twist facts to shoot theories, instead of theories to shoot facts. It does make a considerable difference to me having someone with me on whom I can thoroughly rely. Cry is common. Logic is rare. Data, data, data. I cannot make bricks without clay. Fortunately, there's nothing more stimulating than a case where everything goes against you. So, in answer to this video's titular question, yes. I think it is fair to say the film reinvented people's perception of Sherlock Holmes. However, it arguably presented an interpretation more in line with Doyle's original literary creation. If you liked this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Maybe share it with a friend? Or an enemy? Either way, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more content here on Channel 73.